Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Isn't it wonderful to gather for worship at Lafayette on Sunday, January 2nd in the new year? And we want to acknowledge those who are watching virtually, those who are watching through drive up. You are an important part of this Christian family wherever you are. Remember to text me if you have a joy or a concern. My number is on your insert in your bulletin. Beautiful poinsettias all around me. And if I had my way, I would have these poinsettias with me all year. But the reality is that these each are a precious gift from someone in the congregation. You may feel free to take your poinsettia home after worship today. If you don't want to take it home yourself, please share it with someone. And if you donated one and you can't think of what to do with it, just leave it and we'll make sure it gets to someone to bring them cheer and hope and blessing in the coming year. Next Sunday, we will ordain and install elders and deacons for the coming term. That's great, and that's an important part of the life of any congregation. But Sunday next will also be Epiphany Communion, and that is something that binds us all together. So, we're celebrating next week several aspects of the covenant between God and God's people. First, the ordination and installation of faithful leaders. Second, communion, remembering the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And also epiphany, the visible, obvious presence of God in Jesus Christ. So don't miss next Sunday. And finally, before we continue with the worship of Almighty God, tomorrow is Serena's birthday. <laughs> And we're, going, we're not going to force her to play happy birthday for herself. <laughs> so we will sing a cappella. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Serena. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Now I would like to invite my wife Susie forward, give her the right hand of fellowship and the hug of peace, and turn the service over to her. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let us now call ourselves to worship. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. We enter this year with hope and excitement. O oh Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. Inspire us to sing a new song. Open our hearts to worship and praise your name. Amen.
let us issue forth a prayer for the new year. O oh Lord, we praise you in this new year. We praise you that whatever the future holds, it is in your hand. We look back at this past year, and we see that you have walked with us and provided for us. We praise you for Jesus Christ. We marvel that you became one of us and pitched your tent in our neighborhood. Grateful for salvation in his name, we confess our sins to you. We have thought too much of ourselves and at times too little. Forgive us, Lord. Show us your great love and mercy. Thank you for hope, joy, salvation, and new life. Send your Spirit upon us to lead us into all truth, and to empower us to live and to witness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a promise of grace. By the grace of our Lord, each day is a fresh start. In Jesus' name we are cleansed and made new. Amen.
prayers. And we're kind of a long list today. We've got to keep those prayers coming. And so please continue to pray for Sheila Green, who's your sister of 18 years and Patty Dixon. And please pray for Richard McElveen. He had a fall this week and is facing possible hip surgery. And pray for Ken Norman's friend, Larry Barber, who had a heart surgery and is now rehabbing. And pray for Brett Epperson's family as his uncle Steve passed away after a long battle with cancer. Pray for Randy Burns, who is facing a procedure on Tuesday. And Bonnie Burns is thankful for their first granddaughter, Micah, who had her 27th birthday on New Year's Day. Please pray for the Johnson family as Lois's brother, Ron, joined the church triumphant last week. And please pray for uh, Marie's daughter and son-in-law, Celeste and David, and her sister-in-law, Ellen, who have all tested positive for COVID. And we pray that that will go away. And then please pray for those in Colorado who are suffering the devastating wildfires. And Marlene Wynell adds uh, concerns for Brett Epperson and his family upon the loss of Brett's uncle Steve. And Ken Norman adds that his brother Lamar has COVID. So we'll pray for his brother Lamar suffering with COVID. Let us come before God in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, it is easy. Coming on two years of living what we feel is an unnatural life. Cowering from the devastating effects of a terrible pandemic and then being buffeted occasionally by 100 year storms and fires and natural calamities. Sometimes, Lord, we don't even feel as though we can catch a breath. But here is the gift of a new year which reminds us that you promise us that every day can be a new day, a fresh start, a beautiful hope, an unflowering of forgiveness, a beautiful revelation of righteous salvation. And so, Lord, we pray that as we face what some may call a bleak midwinter, that we have in Jesus Christ new life, new hope, new love. And we pray that you will write those promises on our hearts. Each one of us is facing a challenge or multiple challenges. Each one of us knows disappointment, sorrow, and heartbreak. But Lord, we define ourselves as Christians by joy, by the joy of Jesus Christ and the promise of salvation. And we pray, Lord, that we would be your witnesses in this new year. And it is in Jesus' name that we offer the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us bring forth joyously God's tithes and our offerings. blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and for the gift of a new year. And we pray that we would live our lives as though we were gifts, thank offerings reflecting your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came in. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word, echoes of Genesis, the beginning, before time began. John's gospel takes a step back from creation to establish that the word, Jesus Christ, was the creative force of the Godhead and was pre-existent. The word is before time in time and outside of time. From the message translation of the Bible, 
The Word was first. The Word present to God. God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. The eminent scholar McLaren calls these verses the majestic march of the self-revealing word through creation and illumination of humanity up to the climax of the incarnation, the birth of Jesus Christ. The word had life before being born into the flesh. The Word is the absolute agent of creation. Every creative act was brought to life by the Word of the Father, even Jesus Christ. So, in a sense, we have always needed Jesus, not merely for redemption, but for the very gift of life itself. Ellicott wrote, Life has here no limitation and is to be understood in its widest sense. The life of the body, even of organisms which we commonly think of as inanimate. The life of the soul, the life of the spirit, life in the present, so far as there is communion with the eternal source of life. Life in the future, when the idea shall be realized and the communion be complete. In other words, the same Lord who walked the earth was the author of creation. Pretty impressive. What a great introduction to a sermon. But it's kind of up here. Let's get it down to earth. These are not merely biblical truths. This isn't just God language. This is eternal truth. As science advances, especially quantum physics, a convergence forms between inspiration and observation. For thousands of years, we have tried to explain our natural world. And when the apple fell on Newton's head, the world rejoiced. Alexander Pope, the 18th century English poet and satirist, once entwined. Nature and nature's laws lay hid in sight. God said, let Newton be, and all was light. Well, it was at first anyway, but then, as we kept observing, it became obvious that Newton's laws don't work on a macro level, in other words, a universe scale. On the largest scale, Newton's laws won't work. If you send a probe to Mars using Newtonian mathematics, it'll miss. Wait a minute. How can that be? And so, non-Euclidean geometry sprang forth. Well, then... Neither one of those works on the micro level when you start going down to atoms. My word, what are we to do? The smaller we go, the more confounding reality becomes. John chapter 1 fills in all the blanks. Let me explain. Today, the following are generally accepted by science. You tell me if they sound familiar. First, it's generally accepted now something came from nothing. They can't explain it. Whenever they try to, they just come up with another something. Something came from nothing. Now it's agreed with shrugs on the shoulders of the scientists that there was 
something before the Big Bang. Yes, there was, and we know what it was. Also, now, scientists generally agree that the universe observes everything and that every observation changes objective reality. Oh, God bless them. They're trying so hard to avoid saying God, aren't they? Well, science is desperately trying to explain what we already know, but can never bridge the gap because existence cannot be explained by laws, theories, hypotheses, or evidence. Existence cannot explain consciousness, and consciousness cannot explain forgiveness, compassion, hope, mercy, salvation, or love. 2,000 years ago, in the fullness of time, the Word became flesh, and through the Word was completed the circle of covenant between God and creation. This is not merely biblical truth. It is eternal and universal truth. With apologies to Alexander Pope, I offer truth lay hid till heaven stirred, and now in Christ we know word. I want to conclude with observation on John chapter 1. This is a point of personal privilege. I had a professor in college that meant the world to me. More than a professor, more than a mentor, more than a friend. He shaped my life, Dr. Timothy Gamlin, even though he was only a decade older than most of us. He passed away in 2021, and his wife sent me these observations on John 1, saying that Tim would have wanted me to have them. God said, I am the creator of the universe, the earth, and all living things. I am the creator of you and all people. I am the creator who loves you like a loving parent. I am calling you to love me as fully as I love you. I am calling you to love all people whom I created and whom I love just as I love you. I am calling you to know your brokenness whenever you fail to love God or to love all people. I'm calling you to understand that the sorrows of life are due to the brokenness in you and in other people as you live out your lives in a challenging world. I am the creator who came to you in human form in Jesus of Nazareth. I am in Jesus the healer of your brokenness living and dying for you, embracing and forgiving you. I am in Jesus, the one who teaches you, who shows you the way that you best can live. I am the loving spirit within you, inspiring you, guiding you. I am the spirit speaking and acting through many people who love and heal one another. I am who I am loving creator of all, loving spirit in and among people all around the world, loving healer and teacher who died for you and rose from death. I am the one who in Jesus has promised you that after you die, you will rise to a perfect new life in the kingdom of God. These are not merely biblical truths. They are eternal truth. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your gift of the word, completing the covenant between creation and God. We thank you that we have a personal relationship 
it isn't just an amalgamation of all heavenly promises and a huge ball that can't be penetrated by human vision, but rather it is a personal and profound commitment of our God in Jesus Christ to each one of us. We thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. In body or in spirit, please join me by standing for the hymn of parting, To God Be the Glory. unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen. You may be seated that the ushers might excuse us by rest.